<laughs> Thank you. Let's see. He he was not being prophetic, Sureka. He was just being factual. There, okay. <laughs> no, I was I was being prophetic in saying bless you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I don't know how anyone's feeling, but I feel like um, the only way I can describe it is: if, if, does anyone know what uh, um, a hermit crab is? Yes. Well, yeah. a hermit crab has a, is its house on its back, doesn't it? And there comes a time when it's it's outgrows the house it's got on its back so basically it has to shed the house it's got on its back and find another house <laughs> um, but in between find shedding the house and finding the other house it feels very vulnerable <laughs> and naked and that's a bit where I feel at the moment I feel that God's got me in a transition period and I'm kind of in between two positions and I'm I'm just waiting to get to what what's next because it's you know i know there's things i've got to let go of and there's things i've got to embrace and it's like you feel kind of you're in that state in the middle yeah. and I, interesting enough uh, i was sharing this in my group last night and somebody said that rachel hickson i think it was rachel hickson said that this year was to be a year of transition yeah so that's very interesting i hadn't heard that and interestingly enough, Sareka, somebody in the group last night shared from Haggai chapter two. <laughs> so, uh, we studied Haggai chapter one on Wednesday. Wednesday so somebody yeah. in my group was sharing Haggai two. So there's all these bits and pieces are falling into place. So, Yeah, I've been stuck in Haggai um, and really kind of that transition. And um, even like I'm in, on Haggai two at the moment and it's like, it's 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 just amazing what what God's just opening up. So, anyone else um, you want to share uh, so that you know we can also go ahead, Peter. Um, I, I'm not sure if you actually asked me before to say something, but yes, um, I think in this uh, in this period we we all know that uh, we've been focused on having more of a relationship with God because we can't go to the church we can't have relationships with other people um and i think this is a, a very important thing that sometimes we've got away from our individual relationship unless you're somebody like scotty which seems to have that 100 percent focus on god um that we are being or asked to let go of some idols um and one of them, I think you, you guys might have discussed this recently, was about revival, mm. revival being an idol. Mm. Because revival comes from relationship with God. I, I have a young man I'm in relationship with, and, and he says revival is not uh, biblical. And maybe he's right. Um, also, I, just to add, uh, I was talking to a young man just two days ago, and he wanted prayer or clarity for his calling or his ministry. And I said, no, I, I'm not going to pray for that. I'm going to pray for you to deepen your relationship with God so that he will reveal what it is. Because we can often make uh, a, our calling or ministry an idol. Yeah. And so whether we've got a calling as a prophet, or a pastor, evangelist, whatever, or a businessman, I think the, the focus is it always has to be on God. Even, and this might be controversial, this whole area of spiritual warfare, because I don't see in the New Testament, as we, in the, the Gospels, where Jesus entered into spiritual warfare. He confronted the devil, but only spoke the truth. He didn't fight against him. He just spoke the truth, and the devil pleaded that's not good English um, also when there was uh, people that were demonic or demonically possessed or influenced it was the demon that manifested and Jesus told them to go so there wasn't actually spiritual warfare now that could be another, another discussion but I think we can be distracted sometimes from warring against uh, the, the idolatry in the Catholic Church, warring against the masonry, um, rather than 
building ourselves up in our relationship with God and doing good. In fact, that's what Jesus did. He did good. He preached the gospel. He uh, antagonized the religious people and cast out demons. And I thought, that's so simple. I think sometimes we struggle too hard to do different things. And maybe the prayer for today or for always is deepen my relationship with you mm. and let me help me to be obedient. So good. Yeah, because it kind of comes comes back to that place of intimacy with him, isn't it? And flows out of yeah. that. Yeah. That's that's sort of where I am at the moment. That's yeah. what what I've been hearing this week and um, coming back to the two simple words, follow me. As Jesus called his disciples, he calls us, follow me. And uh, we see him in the, when the rich young ruler, he, he goes away sad. And how many times do we walk away sad is when Jesus calls us to follow me and I say, well, I have to work. Well, I have kids, you know, I have to pay my bills. I have to do this or that. Where simply if we would just follow him, a lot of those things would um, be taken care of as in Matthew six says. So maybe the question today or for, for all of us, at least for me, is like, what do I need to drop? You know, I need to drop this to follow Christ. Uh, what is, uh, what is preventing me today or this week from following him the way I should? Amen. Wow. 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 Paul, you wanted to share a testimony and you know kind of release something if, if that's okay yeah I'll, I'll be as quick as i can in fact what uh, david said as well comes into this and i'm sort of trying to put them all together over the past three days i've been where richard was talking about feeling extremely been through a sense of deliverance and um don't feel vulnerable and i fully endorse what peter was saying about the, the fact that it is a case of just obeying the truth so trying to put some meat on that. Um, in fact, Peter picked out the week, the week before that um, revival can be an idol. And anything we attempt to do in our own strength can end up as an idol. Because of God. So this young man that wanted to have a, a better idea of where his ministry was leading will go to God. Um, if, if, you, if you're doing spiritual warfare, it's probably because um, you're not close because you're firing, you're, you're actually battling the demons that are still in you. And and so I do think there is such a spiritual warfare, but it's in an unredeemed um, state. And so when we're in an unredeemed state, we're always at war, because we're at war with the person that's inside us that isn't yet redeemed. But the moment that we actually hear the truth, the truth sets us free. Where's the warfare? There isn't any. Um, so what, is, what has happened, it went on from this uh, revival is an idol to actually somebody beautifully ministered to me the truth that there was i had i took a pride i did for the lord so here we have another idol because it's true i i was really grateful for the anointing the lord had given me and the insight I had but there is something in the unredeemed person and i think i can say i believe i can say was unredeemed that wanted to sort of enjoy the the prospect of being loved and liked because i was doing a, a good thing which is completely works orientated the moment you step out of the anointing into wanting some credit because it's all his then you're in works and so um night was it thursday yeah it's all a bit of a blur now it happens so quickly it's only saturday now but um thursday morning this word was said we, we had some amazing experiences in in the uh, intercessory group that i've been coordinating um but of course because it's been so amazing i've been it's really good but the lord was saying okay now i need to divide you from that yes it's really good and yes there, you do have an anointing but it's it's you know the glory is mine not that i was trying to take glory but i got a sense of satisfaction and she just said this lady has got an uh, apostolic calling she said that out of the, she hadn't, she wasn't like digging for anything. She said, I just feel the Lord saying there's pride there that needs to be dealt with. And the Holy Spirit hit me. So she just spoke the truth. Didn't kind of, you did this, you did that, you said this or anything. Just, mm-hmm. just spoke the truth. 
Holy Spirit took over. There wasn't any spiritual warfare. She wasn't trying to cast out anything. Holy Spirit. And I said, okay, I'm going to pray about that. I took the day. I knew that there was something. Um, went back and asked if she would pray with me. And at that point, she started, um, she, she had words of knowledge about my past. And in fact, as a child, I'd, I'd taken in both fear, um, fear, fear of my, my father, who, um, I mean, I, I wouldn't have even said until today or yesterday, he was a violent man, because it was so pushed. He was a, he was a headmaster um, in, in days where canes and rulers and everything were used with uh, quite alacrity. And he he disciplined my older brother in such a way that I, I I purposed in my heart I would never be under the same and I immediately if you like I took a curse upon myself that I would be good in all circumstances hence wanting to know I was good hence the hence the pride thing I take pride in being good but it's an immediate um it's immediate opposition to the Lord being the goodness because now it's Paul being the goodness so I've gone to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil instead of staying in the tree of life because it's taken me through that but I I know I'm not going to be on the receiving end of clouts from my father I've seen what he did to my older brother and I can remember in the back of the car coming, was I good right little creep you know goody goody but it, it was like just came naturally to want to avoid the punishment that would come my way if I wasn't good and that I brought right the way through till 66 years two months and the Lord dealt with it this week and I am completely free because I was able to say, yeah, I had pride, the rest came out. And um, if you like, it's prolonged and you might think, oh, why did I say yes? But I can put the whole testament to the group afterwards. You, you will have to have grace and patience, but there's about probably an hour's worth of reading because that's how significant it is. Um, and it, I know I'm free. I really do know I'm free. And I think it's you have to be vulnerable in order to be free. You have to say that they're taking anything with me. You know, Richard's got his old house off and the new house he puts on will be the one that fits him perfectly. Lord has dealt with the stuff that he didn't long, any longer need. So all the pruning is something Holy Spirit will do because the moment you know the truth, I've already got rid of pinch, a, couple of other, uh, a couple of other things because I or not they were they were drawing me into anything they were a complete distraction and and that's what i think david said we just need to prune we need to get back to uh, we need to drop but it's not a case again of doing it in your own strength but it's going back to god strangely enough the person who tells you that you need to focus on him will be what you don't need to focus on and and that way um when 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 you get a new house richard it'll only carry what it needs and not the stuff that you've um, you've been interested in but actual property right that he can bring back to you in a, in a second if it's important because he wants to lead you completely by his spirit so not by my not by power but by my spirit says the lord so wow. thank you lord managed to do it in a few minutes yeah yeah let's you know let's let's take some time in in, in praying um i just i just want you know like i said i've i've, I've been in the book of Haggai, and um you know it, it uh, I just want to read just a few scriptures, but it says, you know, this is the Lord speaking, and it says, because my house that lies in ruins, while each of you busies himself with his own house, and it's almost like we are talking about removing things, getting getting busy with those things, and and um, where is that verse eight, and it it talks about that I may take pleasure in it, that I may be glorified. That I may take pleasure, and you know, to me, the house is the temple, is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That the Lord wants to take pleasure in this in this temple, and so He's kind of like getting all the, you know, muck removed, getting all the distractions removed, so that uh, that you know, His house will be called a house of prayer. So let's just open this time out as we are going to a time of prayer. Shandia <laughs> <laughs> 
Father God, Lord, take the axe to the root of anything in us that prevents us uh, coming to, to your feet. Lord, the, the axe to the root of the good and evil where we know what's good, we know what's bad, we try and avoid one, try and do the other, but it's all in our own strength. Lord, yes, we, need, we need that tree felled, please. Yes, it can end up either in, well, obviously if we if we follow evil, it's going to be kind of satanic, and if we even follow good, but without your holy, it's going to be like white witchcraft, because we're not actually listening to you, we're listening to our own minds and saying, that's good, I'll do that, that's good, I'll do that, that looks good, that will look be. Lord, please take the axe to the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And Lord, lead us down that path, the, the path less travelled, <laughs> back to the feet of Jesus, to the, to the foot of the tree of life, where Mary sat and listened. Martha was busying herself in the tree of knowledge of Mary. She found the better thing to do. She sat at Jesus' feet. And I pray, Lord, in the spirit that that will happen in practice as well, that, that Lord, when we're martyring and see when we're sitting at the feet of Jesus. And I pray, Father God, for an anointing to sit at the feet of Jesus and not look for something to distract being a martyr back to that tree of knowledge and good and evil. And of course, if it's failed, if the root is, if the axe is taken to the root and it can no longer, especially if it's a divine axe, it's not going to re sprout. It's not going to be like the root of Jesse. It's not going to be one that re regrows because we, we've all. I did know that's out of our lives tree of life only tree of life only tree of life only only Jesus only Jesus only Jesus nothing else not even knowledge of the greatest revival that has ever taken place not not knowledge of who do we think the best president has ever been in the United States not knowledge yes, of Isala, Huchiyama, that anything we put on a pedestal that isn't centered on Jesus if he isn't the one if he isn't the central one then indeed wow. in spiritual warfare, but it's absolutely a, a it's a it's 
it's enticement spiritual right. warfare it's looking for things isa kukia lulu we don't need to look for if we know the truth because they won't be there shadow kuki halala hu sadiyama mashendo kuyesu so it's a profoundity it's a profound thing we all spiritual warfare because we get clobbered shadow kuki when we veer off the path e shadow kuki ama masando di lulu but the way less traveled lord now the way in the wilderness lots of people traveling on the way less traveled so that no longer replies lord because we're all going to come to the foot of the tree of love our lord jesus christ the one and only savior the one who is the way the truth and the life and no one comes to the father except through the son god for the gift for everybody in this room myself included lord i can't be complacent it has to be an ongoing process of just meeting with you daily in all that i do think say and even when i sleep in jesus name amen oh jesus lord i just ask for that we would all have those deep encounters with you yes lord god, that we would have those deep encounters with you god those isaiah encounters those jacob encounters or even like the two disciples who walked on the road to Emmaus with you that their hearts were burning god that our hearts be burning for you 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 alone yes, lord. lord that that everything other than lord everything else god that we would be able to remove we would be able to put into that secondary place god <laughs> lord even as we've been hearing this morning about taking out those distractions about lord you doing a deep work in each one of us because you want to be glorified you want to take pleasure even even as you manifest your glory <laughs> mm. so god i pray for deep encounters for each one of us those moments of transformation moments of revelation moments where my heart is drawn even into a deeper place into a deeper realm oh in you oh oh jesus jesus touch fill the fill Oh, uh, the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. In His presence is the fullness of joy. No other, no other need. Search me, O God. Search me, O God. Know my thoughts, I pray. Yes. See if there be any wicked ways. That's right. That's right. Flat me wash me yes. make us whiter than snow lord yes lord Hora, kira, ra, ba, 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 ba. let nothing stand between us and you lord remove every spot every wrinkle every blemish remove it cleanse us wash us mm -hmm. lord see if there be any wicked ways in each and every one of us cleanse it with your precious blood calvary's blood Lord, set us right, set us straight, set us, set us within, set us in line with, to have that relationship with you, Lord. Lord, I pray that you set us in a way that we would feel the heartbeat of the Almighty God. Lord, let the rhythm of your heart be the rhythm of our heart, Lord, pumping out the love, the agape love that you have. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Lord, let nothing, let not the music, let not the noise, let not the clutter, let not the clashing of symbols be a distraction. But Father, let us hear that still small voice of the blessed Holy Spirit. Let us hear the still small voice. Lord, let us know that we are, we are in the straight and the narrow. And we wait upon you, Father. Let us, as we hunger and thirst, Lord, let it not be a battle to hunger and thirst, but let it be something that comes from deep within Lord let, Lord, let it come from deep within, Lord. And we know that, that that hunger and thirst will be quenched from the rivers 
of living water that flow from you, Lord. Cleanse us, search us, make us whole, make us, make us after thy own will, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Father, I feel prompted. Uh, I didn't hear the whole conversation, but with, with what um, Fabrice was saying earlier about his wife, Lord, that we so give to you the knowledge of things that have gone before that, that sometimes clutter our minds. Well, if it's happened before, it could happen again. And uh, that, that is the case with my, my own wife's health. And we kind of visit things on repeat because it's happened before. Lord, I believe again that if we, we know the truth, the truth will set us free, that you took mm. you took everything on the cross. And Lord, whatever we do to press into the fact that you took our infirmities on the cross, you took our sicknesses. And Lord, I, I know that we can kind of make excuses because we've not seen people healed. We see people die. We see all sorts of things. And we think we can't really say that because we can go but, but, but. But the truth is that you took on the cross and i know that there have been people who've gone to glory through covid but they have actually worshipped their way into heaven because it was their time and lord that's the thing our time is but lord because it's in your hands you're also the one who can prevent a sickness or a disease from taking taking root because our time is in your hands it's covid's hands it's not in any heart disease hands it's not in cancer's hands it's in your hands and if we get the truth into us of that, then we can actually rebuke anything because you're the one who orders our time. And if you say it's not time, then disease can't um, argue with you because you're the one. Every knee shall bow, and that, knee, that includes the names of cancer and uh, coronavirus and everything. Every knee shall bow. There isn't an exception. It doesn't say and, 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 unless, unless we doubt. It says every knee shall bow. So, Lord, I, I ask for every knee of every sickness and disease that we, we know in our, in our family's lives to bow to the name of Jesus because you took that, Lord, yeah. on the cross. Paul preached very clearly. He said, fear and trembling, because I, I didn't want to speak to you with wise and persuasive words. Again, that would be from the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. But he wanted to speak just the simplest, absolute truth of Peter's word, the truth of um jesus christ and him crucified it's not a may or a sometimes it's an always and if we're not in the right place to see it as an always then it's us that needs to get in line with your truth lord help us because that's a big one is the truth jesus christ and him crucified took care of the sins of the world the infirmities of the world the diseases of the world and all the evil in the world but we need to walk in the truth I ask that, Lord, to be something that's a gift to each of us in this room, that we can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. There won't be any doubt, because it is the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Wow. Thank you, Lord. Isn't it interesting how, you know, and, you know, I'm preaching to the choir, but how the Lord keeps speaking, you know, it's, it's kind of the same thing in different contexts, in different aspects to each one of us. And, you know, the, the bottom thread is the same. A very bright red thread as well. <laughs> which, is, which is awesome. I, I, I don't know about what you guys, but I was experiencing such a strong presence as we were praying. <laughs> Wow. Richard, over to you. Yeah, it's one of those times where I kind of don't mind if it... I... <laughs> Oops, he's muted himself quite conveniently. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect timing, huh? Perfect it's timing. Times, it's one of those times where I'm, I'm not too fussed if I've got no time left. I remember once I was at a meeting in London and I, I had to speak and I, they ran out of time. And... I was quite grateful because the word I had to bring was going to just cut through the meeting and ruffle huge number of feathers. <laughs> I, was, I escaped. I'm not saying this word is like that, but it's, it's, I don't, I'm not going to find, I don't think I'm going to find it an easy 
word to bring because, you know, as um, Sareka, um on on Wednesday he 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 said he was going to bring Haggai and he asked me if I want you know if I want if I had anything and I, I read Haggai chapter one and you know I saw nothing. I, Sareka brought out so much that night and I didn't see any of it and until he brought it out and you know and and unless the holy spirit opens our eyes um we miss so much don't we um you know it's a bit like um you know nathan told the story to david and david was this is a great story yeah yeah well, justice and and then nathan said to him and that's you. you're the man you're the man and that's what the Holy Spirit does, isn't it? He's the one who puts his finger on us and he says, you're the man. You know, this, this is, this is, I'm talking to you. <laughs> and, um, and so this is, uh, this is how, how the Holy Spirit works. You know, I've just posted a verse from, um, did I, oh yeah. If I am delayed, you will know how people ought to conduct themselves in God's household, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and foundation of the truth. So that's the church is supposed to be the pillar and foundation of the truth. Now, I don't know about you. I, I, I read the book of Acts and I like the book of Acts, but there's one bit in the book of Acts that, that kind of unsettles me. And... Uh, there's, there's a passage in the book of Acts that, that doesn't sit very well. And it's quite close to the beginning. I mean, you know, at the beginning, everything's going wonderful. Um, people have been healed. People have been saved. You know, thousands have been converted. And then suddenly we have chapter five. Chapter five appears. And you have this episode where two people, Sereka smiling, you have this episode <laughs> where two people uh, are brought in who have sold a property and brought the money to the apostles and have laid the money at the apostles' feet and they've claimed that this is the whole price of what they were selling. So basically they told a lie. And the, the long and the short of it is as you know the story, they're carried out dead, both of them. And I read that story and I think, oh, that's, I, don't, I don't really like this story. It's a bit severe, isn't it? I mean, you know what? Couldn't, couldn't they just got a, you know, a verbal warning or something, you know? And, and you kind of look at it and it's, it's, it's severe. They, they, are, they are carried out dead, you know? Um, there's, you know, and and I and then you wonder, well, were they really were they really saved? Did they go to heaven? Didn't you know? There's all these questions around this whole passage, you know. Um, this whole passage. But when you see that the church is supposed to be the pillar and the foundation of truth, you understand that God was protecting the move of God, because this was an attempt to water down the truth. Not just the truth that, you know, you mustn't tell lies. But the truth that you could say that you were giving everything to God when in fact you weren't, you were holding something back. Wow. You know, the idea that you could build a church that pretended it was giving everything to God. But in actual fact... Was holding back. part of what they should be giving to the Lord because the church was working and was full of power and full of the glory of God because those people were in complete surrender to God and they were giving everything if you read the passage it said they were they had everything in common they had sold they were selling their property it was a total commitment to God and that's why the power was moving but there was a there was a, a counter plan by Satan to bring in a different kind of church. A church that said, you can just give lip service and you know, 
give something and, and give half of your life to God and, and keep the other half to yourself and everything will be fine. And that's why this story is at the beginning of Acts. This is, you know, I, I didn't understand why is this story even in it? You know, this is, this is an uncomfortable story, you know. This is not a pleasant, you know, this is not a nice reading, you know what I mean? It's an uncomfortable, it makes me feel uncomfortable reading it. And, and you, so we try to sort of say, well, that doesn't apply to me. That only applies to somebody who would lie about, you know, giving money, you know, it doesn't apply to me, you know, and, and, and you know, I, 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 I don't believe in telling lies, you know. And I know that that story does apply to me. I'm, I'm not pretending that, you know, I, I, you know, I know that, that, you know, the things I'm holding back with, you know, and this is, this is the point, you know, these, these, I'm oh, sorry, somebody's just, this is, this is the point, you know, that this story, you know, and this is what the Holy Spirit does. He says, you are the man, you know, don't pass this on to somebody else. Don't think that this applies only to somebody else. Because we read that story and think, oh, well, that applies to Ananias and Sapphira. We're off the hook. Yeah, I never do anything as dastardly as lie to God. But, but do we pretend that we're sold out to God when maybe we're not? And I think the church age we live in is a church age where it's acceptable to bring half of your life to God and keep the other half for yourself. And I think, I think this is why we don't see the results that we should. And this is exactly what Sereka brought out on Wednesday. As you can see, it's not an easy message to bring. You're doing fabulously, Richard. But I believe it's the truth. You know, um, and God has been challenging me so much about truth, you know, and authenticity recently. About the fact that our lives have to be authentic. You know, they have to be true. And it's not just what we say with our lips. You know, Jesus said to the scribes and Pharisees, he said, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. You, you know, it's, it, it, we can have the right beliefs. There's, there's nothing wrong with the doctrinal basis of the church. The church is sound doctrinally. Most of it is. I mean, there's areas where it's not sound doctrinally, but, you know, most of us all believe in the, you know, the, the, you know the various doctrines justification by faith and you know whatever you whatever doctrine you want to bring up so it's not having the right doctrines it, it's having a life that lines up with the truth and with jesus so it's that's a simple word that's that's really all i've got to say Brilliant. um Brilliant. it's challenged me to the core really because i've always been worried about that story and i never really understood what what it was, you know, what it was about. And then suddenly the penny dropped, you know, and it put me in the frame, you know, it didn't just put Ananias and Sapphira in the frame. It put me in the frame as well. Um, it's so, interesting. Sorry, Gwen Richard. So that's really where, um, where I'm at at the moment. So it, it's just this, you know, and it, it, this thing here, it says that which is the church to live of the living God, the pillar and the foundation of the truth. And, and God was wanted to protect the church and what he was birthing and to stop that dilution. Because Kenneth was talking about this earlier. Kenneth basically said it most of what I was going to say, stop this dilution, you know, this, this dilution coming in to the church. 
where where things were diluted and, and watered down and, and um, you know compromised and of course we see that it worked for a while but eventually of course we see massive problems coming later in the later centuries of the church and how the whole thing became completely almost completely um corrupted so that's it basically folks so good richard wow it's almost like the holy spirit begun you know pr prior to your message and he's just he, he's, he's, he's just been working through even what, what, what you spoke. And uh, sometimes we don't need a complex message. We just need to hear the heart of the Father. I, I was going to say it's uh, I'm in chat, but it's, it's amazing the difference between how Holy Spirit treated Ananias and Sapphira and how Jesus treated Saul of Tarsus. The Saul of Tarsus was a murderer but he actually believed he was doing right Sapphira and Ananias and Sapphira on the face of it were doing something far less they were actually lying to God and once Saul of Tarsus met with Jesus he thought he thought he was doing right because he actually now was being told he was persecuting and he now knew the truth um, Supposedly, if you have the Holy Spirit, you already know the truth. So if you then decide to pretend you don't, there isn't any comeback. That That is blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's why one much more um, harsh. They were lukewarm. At the time that Saul met Jesus, he was stone cold. But as he, as he says to the church, either hot nor cold, but as you're lukewarm, I will spit you out. And that's the difference between um, the way Ananias and Sapphira were treated um, by the Holy Spirit, has treated Saul of Tarsus, who was redeemable. Yeah, uh, it's just that uh, taking a cue from what Kenny Kenneth was sharing earlier on. Sometimes the world or the church today, uh, and most Christians try to treat God as a buddy and a mate, and uh, but like what Richard was saying and uh, upon the book of uh, in, in Acts 5 what Ananias and Sapphira were doing was they were trying to contaminate the holiness and the presence that was there so we have to realize the purity and the holiness of the God we serve and uh, anything that tends to dilute it or contaminate it will be spewed out. And we have to be cautious to protect our lives and our spirits and our souls at all times, because the enemy comes, he comes from a, such a humanistic, beautiful, feel good, tickle, tickle your soul type of situation and can easily divert you away. And that that's could easily be what happened to Ananias and Sapphira as well. They didn't realize, they didn't fathom the holy, the God that they were worshiping. They thought, you know, we could, because Peter says, you've lied in, in, I was just looking at the Amplified version. He said, you've been hypocrites and you've been lying to God. And that's something we can never do. We can never, never do because God sees us through sees right through us at all times and uh, he doesn't listen to our lips but he looks at our heart and out of the heart comes everything okay. may i tease hey, something sir. else sorry go ahead uh, after you paul bless you nishan thank you um i just want to tease something out of the last few days because i i totally agree with the reverence and reverent fear and so on but there there in knowing that he is actually our friend too and I, but it's in the circumstances of reverend fear so we we can know him as daddy we can sit on his lap effectively but it's not something that we invent as a place we want to be without going through um the of knowing that he is he is god 
uh, we we can't pretend he's our best friend, uh, uh, you know, sort of an imaginary friend, as some people would be rude about the way um, Christians see God. He uh, he is real, and but in the circumstances, he loves us with a passion. He loves us so much, he will not allow us to do an Ananias and Sapphira. But anybody who is religious and hasn't yet come to an understanding of who the Holy Spirit is, he actually has compassion on because effectively they are cold. Lukewarm is where you're trying to pretend to be one thing and another. The, the Pharisees, he didn't actually berate them as when um, they, they were carrying the rocks. He, he didn't wag the finger or, 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 or send destruction upon them. He just said, let those who are without sin cast the first stone. He was, he was actually rather mild, authoritative, but mild. When the soldiers came to arrest him, it says in John that when he said, I am he, to the question, where is Jesus of Nazareth, the soldiers actually fell to the ground under the power of I am. And he willingly went to the cross and was willingly arrested. Again, those soldiers, he could have had um, legions of angels to destroy them. But again, they didn't understand the danger is when we play with fire, is when we have strange fire, when we actually have the Holy Spirit and then we try and pretend the a power and it's our responsibility and we can tell, well, then we are in danger. So it's, it's that, it's, it's a mighty responsibility to be baptized of the Spirit and then decide that you're going to lie. All right, can I just jump in quickly? Sorry, John, I'll see your hand up. Uh, yeah, I just want to say, let's just have a look at the results of what, after Ananias and Sapphira because the devil wanted to derail something and he, he didn't succeed because the purity and the compromise was kept out and then we see in 12 now many signs and wonders were done among the people through the apostles and they were all gathered in Solomon's portico none of the rest dared to join them but the people held them in high esteem Yet more than ever, believers were added to the Lord. Great numbers of both men and women. So that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats in order that Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as they came by. A great number of people would also gather from towns around Jerusalem, bring in the sick and those tormented by unclean spirits and they were all cured. So this is what God was trying to stop being derailed. And this is what the devil was trying to derail. Um, we see that in the next passage. John, it's up to you. I'm not sure. Can you hear me? Yep. So sometimes my audio disappears. I, I, I don't know if this is a question or a comment or whatever, but we started with the passage in Timothy. Um, how people ought to conduct themselves in the household of God, because it's the church of the living God, the support and bullock of the truth. And um, when thinking about Ananias and Sapphira and their individual um, eternal destiny, I don't know, but the message here was to the church. It wasn't singling out those two individuals. And I think we're often in very much in danger of taking all these messages out on me personally. And of course, we have to do that. But it's also the church. How do we get this message out to the church? That it's not it's about me. It's about what we're doing. You know, I've been looking at um, some of the reform teachers at the moment and trying to work out how we can talk to them and we've got a couple of people that we're involved with who are heavily into reform teaching and are starting to look at us as if we're some kind of aliens because we believe in the holy spirit <laughs> that sounds bad but, but how, how do we get this message out without just going back to fundamental principles and says so if it's not in the bible i'm not going to do it kind of thing i'll just leave that out there could I, could I just say, I, I was I was a reformed charismatic. That's, that was my background, reformed charismatic. Uh, I just wanted to share a couple of things. Well, thanks, uh, Richard, for your yes, yeah, thank you. yeah, it's really good and encouraging. 
uh, when I read this uh, before, uh, um, one of the things I've thought as well is, uh, well, Ananias and his wife, they, 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 in my, this is how I imagine it. They are very, they are young Christians. Uh, the new Christians, that's how I picture the whole thing. And of the, because of the misguidance from the, the enemy, the, 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 the consequences was quite harsh. I felt like it's harsh. And, some, and when I think about it, I'm like, ah, it's, it, like we're so taking for granted for what caused the um, consequences and what we go, what I go through uh, um, uh, daily, you know, because I have the same, same type of conviction. Okay, the, how do I apply this story in my life? Um, I have the same conviction, especially last night. I've been thinking about this exactly that I'm talking about me myself, that I know God in a way that I have a relationship and I understand his character. And I, um, like you, many of you guys, obviously. <clears throat> and, but yet I still do the wrong things. You know, I, I still do the wrong things and I do it in a way that after I do anything wrong, I'm like, this is wrong what I did. And yet, like God's trying to teach me throughout my mistake, and um, and and when I read the what you shared, uh, Richard, I, I I just feel that um, how do we learn? What do we learn out of this practically? Like it's such a harsh consequences, as far as I'm concerned. Like yes, uh, it is not right, but yet it is a a harsh punishment. I would I, I mean a harsh consequences, and and. And that's where sometimes I think that, like we we're so uh, like the grace of God is so like unmerited. It's su such a uh, it's like we can't understand, it, 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 and we should and I should not take it for granted and try my best to 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 to, to follow the lead of God. And uh, and yes, practically, how do we do it? Because constantly the attack of the enemy is always there. But do we? do I give loads of credit to the enemy saying that he deceived me most of the time? Or do I say, I'm not strong enough? Where is my gray line, basically? Where do I start to fight back? Or how do I get more closer to God rather than let the enemy deceiving me? Um, and these are my challenges that always I go through because I want to be a better person, but yet uh, I get deceived and, uh, and the challenge comes that, how do I draw myself closer to God and to make sure that I don't do the same type of mistake? Because I see the early Christians, well, in this case of Ananias, uh, how the consequences were so harsh, you know? Uh, these are the thinking that I'm thinking about. Your message definitely relates to what I've been thinking last night because I was thinking that many people call us, oh, Christians, I have a free pass, you know, uh, the non-believers. <clears throat> Christians have a free pass. They, they just be, believe in Jesus and, and they believe that they will be safe forever. And I explained that, no, that's not really true. There's a lot of work that needs to be put behind. But, but in terms of um, how do, like, I do, I, I, even though I don't make mistakes, I ask God's forgiveness, but I should try my best to not repeat those mistakes. That's where the true value of a Christian comes through. If I keep on doing the same mistake, then I'm basically cheating God, like that subconsciously, that's what I'm thinking. Therefore, draw myself closer to God. Uh, that's the hardest part for me, as far as I'm concerned. Like, keep on going back to Him uh, to be very close to what God is trying to teach us. That does it make sense? Or I talk too much, I guess. <laughs> no, no. David, you want to say something? I can see you. Yeah. You're trying to unmute yourself. Mute myself. <laughs> Um, one thing that helps me is, is really trying to get down to the root of the question of what distracted me from the face of Christ? What distracted me from looking up uh, to him? What was I looking for? What was I looking to fulfill me that I thought that would fulfill me more than Christ? And those are questions that we, you might have to go deep and look and see what, where was I deceiving myself or what was I listening to? in seeing that um, I got distracted in provision uh, that maybe God isn't going to provide all that, uh, all that uh, uh, I think he can, 
uh, maybe it's a, a fear of something that might happen. Um, so there's a lot of different questions. Just but what got you? What distracted you uh, on this in in this particular situation? What distracted you from the face of Christ? And you might have to sit on that question for a while to get to the answer. But I, I think it, uh, it it's a good it's good homework to do. It's good work to do on the in on the in inside. Uh, and sit down with God and have have a have a chat with the Holy Spirit and uh, see what He reveals. Yeah, yeah, that's so good. That's, that's so really good. good. That's really good. I think, yeah. So, so I think maybe uh, addressing your question, Nish, is I don't know. This is just my thoughts. Is we we have to come to a place where we realize that we can't do it. That's the key. You know, recognizing that we can't live the life, we can't do what we're called to do, and then we surrender and we allow God to do it through us and in us. That's that's what really, you know, Peter had to come to that place. He said he wouldn't deny Christ, and he did it three times. He, he thought his flesh could actually do obtain the kingdom, but it, it was, you know, as it says in, is it Haggai? It might be hey guy not by my nor by power but by my spirits no it's in Zechariah. 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 Right. Zechariah. The same characters like <laughs> Sir Rubberball, Joshua are, are in that book as well so not by might nor by power but by my spirit we have to come to the place where we we know that we, we can't do it and that can take years that can years mm. for some for some people that's a long process <laughs> mm. Mm. you know of learning you, you, need, you life, need surrender <laughs> a life a, a lifelong battle so to speak that uh, yeah that like, the thorn, like that could be like the thorn on one side because it just keeps you in check to realize who is god and who is you know whatever what he is to you yeah and even yeah. that um, even that uh, you know the aspect of yielding and surrender that itself is a journey you know and you know and that itself is a journey for us to learn to come to that point and uh, that may even take our whole life because you know we say yeah we want you know there's that desire we say we want to but yet how much more is there to, to yield and surrender and um, you know going back to uh, the text in timothy you know it talks about this is what the church should be and hey that's who we are we are the church and again you know going away from that you know you know we've been having a seminar on uh, micro church planting and you know, it's like, you know, we have to get away from the terminology of thinking church is, you know, the building or whatever. It's like Paul says, this is who you are. This is, you know, the pillars of truth and foundation. Um, I know Paul wanted to say something. and I think Peter, did you want to say something as well? Go ahead, Peter. Um, just, yeah, two comments uh, for Nish, I think it is. I can't see with the screen very well. Uh, mm -hmm. Romans chapter seven, I think, uh, talks, uh, Paul talks about, the difficulty um and i remember when i first became a christian somebody said if you're worried about something that's good it's when you're not worried about it the other comment i'd like to make about richard's teaching which was uh, incredibly challenging i think it was the grace of god that took ananias and sapphira away and i believe they went to heaven but he took them out to bring that godly fear Mm. That's my personal opinion. Paul? <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I sense that's right in both counts of what Peter has said. Um, I, th I think we have an incredibly gracious God. And I think, Nish, when you um, you said that you're, you're convicted that you've done the, th the thing you don't want to do, that's very much, I think, it's Romans 7. Paul said, the very thing I want to do is the thing I don't do, and the thing I do is the thing I don't want to do. But Thanks be to God. Now that's not that's not licensed. This it's a recognition that when we just know what's good and know what's bad, and we just try in our own strength to do the, you know, we know that something's bad, so we try and do good. That isn't necessarily um, the Lord Himself saying do that good. Is the one who convicts you that something is wrong. But very often when we're doing good, we don't even bother to go to him because we think we know it already. You know, say, say 
beautiful music, I'm sure, but he was wanting to take the credit. And if we even do good with an attitude of wanting to have a pat on the head, then we're actually the purposes of God. And that's the difficult thing, which is why I, I can I can hear it now in my voice. I, I mean, I don't think I've ever said in my life, well, I used to do I, I've good and I know God understands. But that's what people say that don't even want to accept Jesus. I've done good to people. And actually, it's nothing to do with whether we where the Holy Spirit has actually put that goodness in us because we might have completely the wrong motivation for doing good and that's still sin but we won't see it because we think that's okay I've got that one sorted it's only the bad I need to sort out and he's actually saying there's another thing and it, it's so important that we recognize that when when you know that you've done something wrong it's Holy Spirit that's telling you so you're in a good place and you can go back to him and say Lord I've done it again I'm sorry but the bigger thing is, are you going to him for every step? Are you actually going to, this is the surrender that Richard's been talking about. It's surrendering all. I, my testimony earlier was that I, I was quite proud of doing good. But I was proud of doing good. And the moment I was proud of doing good, it wasn't any longer the Holy Spirit that was telling me. It was, I, I was proud. And, and that was the that was the key for everything else that came out. I will, if you don't mind, guys, I will put the testimony on. It's, as I say, it's long. But uh, basically what happened was that he, through that one little niche of my armour, then the Lord said, OK, and this is why you've been like that. You were, you were come to people to think you were good, but that wasn't coming from me. That was your taking control, keeping control, even manipulating others to think you're good because you would always check that you, you 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 put the good side but that actually isn't god that's actually doing what ananias is. yes look we're giving all this money yeah not quite and and that's where it comes to so you're in an amazing place niche that you are aware when something's wrong as long as you keep a short account and keep going back to him he'll keep on saying well done my good and faithful servant but he loves you too much not to actually work on the good doing for him as well if it doesn't come from him so it, it's it's a it's a precious place to be we're being convicted by the lord take us a step further that we won't sort of i don't need to worry about that that's nothing unless it's from him it's something thanks paul paul i would also uh, I, I would i would recommend that you record it actually yeah it'll be it'll be so good um okay. you know, it's, it's 11 40 we got to close up but you know we could we can go on for the next couple of hours but i think it's something that you know we are we are you know the lord's doing something so deep in us <clears throat> like as a group but i think you know it's beyond it's within the body as well mm. that is drawing us so great stuff ish would you like to close us up in prayer yes uh, hallelujah lord we thank you lord jesus praise you lord jesus lord we thank you lord for bringing us all once again on this beautiful saturday to learn about your word and also we thank you for what you have brought uh, your word that we got to know from richard lord jesus lord we pray and commit the next coming week into your precious hands and cover each of us with your precious blood and help us to draw nearer to you as well as to deepen our relationship in you and be a brand ambassadors for you, Jesus Christ. We ask Amen. this in the precious mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Oh, thanks everyone. This has been so rich. Uh, as always. So we'll see, we'll see you guys next week. God bless. Thank you all. Thank you. God, God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless you. God bless you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks Bye. very much, Richard. That was brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant, Richard. <clears throat> Thanks, Rich. Very good. That was